It's always interesting when someone is in question for being a bad person, like, oh, I don't know, say being a serial killer, the Long Island serial killer, to have some perspective on just what were they like day to day. People wonder these sort of things. If someone is capable of committing such heinous crimes or alleged to have committed such heinous crimes, you are kind of curious, but what's that guy like at work? What's they what's he like when he goes through the drive-through at Taco Bell? What kind of human are we dealing with on a regular basis? And sometimes that's really boring. There's really not much to know because they fool everyone. And sometimes they leave a mark in other ways where they're not uh, the most congenial human being and they feel like maybe something's off, but Maybe not to the level of knowing that they're a serial killer, but something, something's off. We have some interesting accounts here, or a interesting account, of Rex Hewerman, who is accused of being the Long Island serial killer. Uh, and we're going to go through it. it it's uh, involving his architectural firm and some of the work that he was uh, intimately involved in. When you see pictures of Rex, Stacy, I mean, does... It, does he give you the creeps? Does he give you any sort of feeling as, you know, like kind of Koberger does or anything like that? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting vibes from him. I watched that video of him talking about being a fixer. That was that's roaming around on the Internet. You know, kind of the first video that we've had of him where somebody was like doing a documentary. Mm -hmm. And I got the creeps from it. And I, I'm trying to remove myself from the situation that if while I'm watching this, would I have gotten the creeps? Had I not known what he allegedly did, he still seems like an arrogant kind of a human. And the things that I've read, sounds like he has got some serious issues with women. I mean, obviously, yeah, that's an understatement. But but you can just sense there's a, a bit of entitlement there. Uh, and it, I'm being very judgmental. But, you know, first impressions are everything. And I just from him, I'm feeling something. I, I just feel like he's somebody I would not have gotten along with. Mm -hmm. including the fact, and I'm so offended by this, and I'm going to throw this out here, that he was targeting petite women, and I am under five feet tall, and it just verberated with me. I It just rocked me to my core when I read that. Sure. I'm not a sex worker, but I am petite. <laughs> I'm not a sex worker, but I am petite. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna isolate that audio and use that against me at some point. I gotta you? put that on a hot key where it's just like, <laughs> what do you think of that, Stacy? I'm not a sex worker, but I am petite. <laughs> do it on a day when you're like sick or something, and you're like, hey, Stacy's here. <laughs> All strange things. That was a very weird episode with her. Yes, uh, that's such a that's such a radio thing to do to your coworker. It Absolutely, is. it is one hundred percent. The story of this one, uh, and it was originally reported by the New York Post. Uh, the early hours of uh, seemingly ordinary Friday, July fourteenth. You know, this is just a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. Real estate agent Jeffrey Saint uh, Armin's daily routine was abruptly shattered by a phone call that sent shockwaves. Through his world, and rightfully so, the voice on the other end of the line was one of his clients. Her voice shaking, breathless and scared. The news had just broken that the notorious Gilgo Beach serial killer, who had evaded capture for over a decade, had been arrested. The name? Rex Hewerman. This is where chills go up their spines. An architect that she had worked closely with over the past year on a Brooklyn brownstone project. Jeffrey of uh, Sir Hans uh, vividly recalls his interactions with Hewerman, yet it was his client's chilling experience with Hewerman that drew a cold veil of shock over their past professional association. Speaking on the condition of anonymity, she recounted her baffling encounters with Hewerman, which dated back to 2002 when she had purchased her Crown Heights home. Fast forward two decades later, 2022, Hewerman played a significant role in the renovations of her property as the expediter and architect, which was ultimately sold. I think that's probably a good thing that it was ultimately sold because I don't think you want to be sitting in the house or knowing, hey, you know what? The Long Island serial killer helped us sign this. Uh, she drove yeah, that's not a good selling point. Not really, not really. Uh, she drove him home one time because she actually relocated to Long Island. St. Arnold uh, told the Post, hinting at a journey along with a path that was dark and desolate, reflecting on that eerie drive home the client revealed a haunting conversation that had taken place between them quote 
At one point on the drive, we talked about the Gilgo Beach murders. We even discussed the burlap and why someone would use that. In retrospect, thinking about that conversation, it is just bone chilling, she confessed. She delved further into her interactions with Hewerman during the renovation. She noted his peculiar behavior throughout the transaction. He was becoming very difficult to work with, even becoming belligerent at times. He was constantly arguing with the plumber on the job and questioning his work. Just very odd behavior, she said. For some reason in the transaction, he would constantly say, and this is, I think, important, I'm not doing anything to get a fine or open an investigation of my license. Oh, boy. Very much does not not does not want attention on him whatsoever. And nobody would. Nobody wanted an investigation into your work or your license. But I think even more so if you might happen to be a serial killer. Uh, after the finalization of the property sale, uh, her uh, distaste for Hurman had grown to such an extent that she preferred him not to attend the closing. When we ultimately were able to close on the property, I had such a bad experience with Rex that I told him not to attend the closing, she said. Regardless, he was still owed a balance of payment, which made a separate trip to the attorney's office to pick it up. Apparently, he had some disagreement with one of the women associates at the firm. This associate was so uncomfortable with her exchange with Rex that she refused to be in the office when he picked up the check. Ultimately, the okay, partner... Okay, that's really telling, isn't it? 100%. Ultimately, the partner... At the firm, gave the check to Rex when he arrived with his daughter, she explained. That's extremely telling. If, if, you in, if you're making someone at the front desk so uncomfortable that you can't be there, there's something very wrong with your personality. And everybody's upset from time to time. But if, if that's setting someone off so much so that they just, I don't want to be around this. Uh, yeah, that's a bit nuts. Have you ever dealt with somebody where you're like, I can't be in the same room with that person? I, I've worked, Will, you and yeah. I have both worked for somebody <laughs> like that. Yeah, I have. Uh, he would be one of those people that uh, this would be, we had a boss years ago uh, that had, uh, would sexually harass half of our staff and proposition them. And I think even hired some uh, with the expressed belief that he was going to get sex because he was hiring them. I saw the emails. Um, he was what he was probably, he's probably on the top of my list. Yeah. I think at some point we're going to hear some stories that maybe he was a serial rapist and, and we'll go, yeah, we knew him and mm-hmm. we sounded the alarm on him. You, especially, um, I was harassed by him and, and he always gave me just the creeps that there was always something that just made you feel off. And I think, especially as women, you have to trust that intuition, that mm-hmm. gut feeling of something's not right here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm imagining kind of the same with this guy, that people were getting that vibe from him that something's not right. Mm-hmm. Uh, they give it off and they're completely unaware. I think, I think what really um, defines that is their unawareness of their behavior. I think that's what makes it even more creepy. Sometimes, Mm -hmm. even more so than just like a, and I'm not saying just like, it's no big deal, even more so than a jock that seems to, you know, just think he's all that. And I'm thinking more back to younger days, like high school, college time, where some guys are kind of like that and the women kind of fawn at that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody who just, they were in the shadows. They feel that they there's a, a, mis, uh, a miscarriage of justice to them and that they're owed uh, the attention of women because they're not that bad jock guy who's just going to use them. But then they turn to this whole other creepy guy that obsesses and follows unwantedly, makes advances that are not wanted, and then gets even more upset because they're not accepted. And then that's what you get with, I think, somebody from the profile, kind of like Koberger, uh, that's what you get with the incel movement and uh, people that go down that route. And they have a whole support community now for that. But that's part of it. They're completely unaware of how absurd their uh, ambiguity. Okay, here's the word again. Ambu- here's the word again. Ambiguity. 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 I'm not even reading it. I just can't say it. Ambu- it's a tough word. It's okay. <laughs> Someday I'll get it. Uh, they're, they're, um, they don't realize it. And I think that's the the lack of self awareness is what makes it super creepy. But yeah, I I agree with that, and it's it's part of that plays into maybe them being able to do this that they just are not self aware. There's yeah. no way for them to look in the mirror and go, "What the f- 
fuck am I doing with my life? They yeah. don't have any way of doing that. There's no introspection. And if, no. there, and if there was one who is in a healthy mindset would be like, holy shit, what would I, what am I doing? And how, you know, that's, you know, I, I mean, I look back on like being uh, a teenager and, you know, your hormones are running wild and all that. And, you know, guys, you know how you, you kind of get obsessive sometimes on a girl. And I never stalked anywhere or anything like that. But I remember just kind of those feelings of, you know, just very strong um, kind of testosterone or whatever it is, where you're just like, wow, this really, you know, you, you get really kind of amped up about something. And some people just stop. Most guys just, OK, can calm down. You know, I'm going to be good. And then as you get older, that seems to kind of calm down. But then you have the ones that then act on that sort of thing and think that they're going to get some sort of justice for their own fucked up feelings. Um, it, it, it's, it's really creepy uh, when, when one can't control things like that uh, or it just continues well into later life and they never learn. It's, it's terrifying. And there are a lot of people that, that we come across on a daily basis where we see little glimmers of that. Mm -hmm. And it just makes you wonder, especially the more that I've gotten into the murder podcast, I'm looking now a little bit more critically with my interactions with people, even oh, like yeah. at Chipotle the other day, <laughs> there was somebody there that just kind of one of my flags went up like you're being weird, you know? And I, I don't know that I ever would have noticed that before. So I, I think this is some great information that we're that we're providing and, and not that we're experts in any way, but just bringing these facts and personality traits to light of of these horrible people. It, it's worth having it in your head just to be aware. You also have to understand that just because he gave you a little extra barbacoa doesn't mean <laughs> that he's going to kill you in your sleep. You know, may mean something else. But, you know, oh. it's kind of a <laughs> uh, so that's some of the interactions uh, that have uh, taken place. St. Arnold shared that the property was eventually sold to a celebrity buyer whose identity remains a secret. <laughs> oh, I wonder who that is. And I wonder what mm. they're thinking now. <laughs> Despite the troubling interactions with Hiraman, his client had always spoken highly of his work. Some uh, she's someone uh, that really supports this guy, St. Uh, Armand expressed uh she needed the weekend just to decompress, he added, as she uh, grappled with the shocking releva uh, re revelation of uh, Hureman's arrest. Uh, I, I can't, that's a weird one. You know, when you, have you ever had that where you hear about someone that you've worked with closely uh, mm -hmm. and then they, you know, they've been arrested or they've done something horrible uh, and you're like, oh my God, or, or just a friend or something like that? Yeah, actually. And I, I think in one of our podcasts, we talked about it. I had a serial killer in my class, high school class. Hey. Yeah. Um, he killed, I think, five people. And I was I actually was on a cheerleading squad with his sister and I saw him on America's Most Wanted. And I I never did get a lot of details about it, but I I distinctly remember because he had a very unique name. I saw it and went, oh. <gasps> Oh, my God. And I never would have suspected him. There are people in my life, especially from the radio industry, that I would have suspected before him. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, and it, that's that's the weirdest part, how much they can hide in plain sight uh, for so long. Uh, let me look at this other one that I remember. I'm just curious if I can get his name because it's public knowledge. Um, looking up. Here we go. This is someone who I had worked with. Uh, and you may recognize the name. He was in Northeast Wisconsin uh, for many years. This is back in 2010. Uh, Rich Allen. He was the morning Ooh. guy on our uh, our oldie station in the group that I worked at. And his office was right next to me. And I swear, I, I usually have pretty good uh, predator dar, if you will. Yeah, you do. Like, I, I, I spotted out him. I was like, when I found this out, I was like, Oh my God. Like I never got any weird vibe from him whatsoever. He just seemed very genuine and friendly and not at all creepy. I I, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it, he really hit it well. Well, he, so what did he do? Well, he was sentenced. This is 10 years ago uh, to uh, a total of 10 years uh, only, but the judge suspended the final eight years on the condition of Kiefer's good behavior. 
according to Fox 11 TV. He was sentenced to five years probation uh, after his release from prison, uh, which he can ask to have transferred to Wisconsin. Uh, he also has to undergo psychiatric evaluation as a sex offender evaluation and register as a sex offender in Virginia. I don't know if he has to register in Wisconsin. He was communicating if and I'm just going off of memory at this point. He was communicating with someone who he thought was a child uh, in Virginia. And he, I mean, it was very much to catch a predator style like Chris Hansen. It was not a child. I believe it was an FBI agent. Uh, and it was a sting. He drove from Wisconsin to Virginia to meet this person and was arrested because it wasn't a real person. Oh my goodness. And, yeah. And I, in, well, I'm not going to give away her location, but I know somebody who worked in law enforcement. She's, she's also petite, but she oftentimes set up men um, as, as a sting operation um, mm -hmm. because she looked younger. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's out there. And I think if you're somebody who does that online, you are really running a risk because it, chances are the person you think you're communicating with is an officer. I, I don't know. I think uh, I think your odds are probably more so in the favor of the predator, quite honestly. I think there's you think far, so. That makes me sad. I think there's far more predators out there than there are officers. I just think we don't have the resources to do it. I think the predators far outnumber the amount of law enforcement that are out there doing that. I've always wanted to be involved in a sting like that. And it's funny because my fiance has said the same thing. It's something we kind of bonded over early. It's like, hey, wouldn't it be fun to do that someday? <laughs> uh, it would. But I'll tell you, you better be damn sure, especially your fiance, that police are are ready oh, you yeah. know, to, to dive in oh, and, and yeah. protect I mean, you. If we were to do that, it would be with the law enforcement or something like that. But uh, I've always thought that would be uh, an interesting thing to do and uh, something good to do. However, it is kind of sad to note that a, a large percentage of those horrible people that we saw on To Catch a Predator ended up getting out uh, or charges dropped because uh, there were so many things where they could go back into the interactions of being set up. Uh, for this, uh, that their attorneys in many cases ended up getting charges dismissed. So as lovely as it looked on TV and as much as we thought justice was being served, uh, in reality, not a lot was. Ugh. But oh, I, 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 I think they fixed a lot of those loopholes now uh, where they, they know how to handle things better than, you know, just Chris Hansen sitting in a house. Uh, nice. And <laughs> but I actually have a little story for you. Um, we just... Uh, found out the other day that uh, in our gated community, uh, there is oh a sex offender that is moving back in. What? Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. How? Uh, well, his wife and child uh, still live here. Uh, and I, my first reaction was, why are you still with him? <laughs> <laughs> and, and people, valid question. And then the first thing I get from people is like, well, you know, you got to walk a mile in her shoes. Like, no, I think she needs to like take a step out of her shoes and take a look at the direction she's walking in that mile and maybe say time to change direction. Uh, granted, yeah, that can't be easy. But uh, your husband was just arrested on uh, charges of having nearly 5000 images of child pornography in his computer. Uh, from the ages of four to 16 Ew. and distributing. So, Ew, okay. Okay. That it's may, one thing if yeah. you, you search something and, oh my God, that shouldn't have landed on my computer. And you're like, holy crap. Yeah. Oh, I've had that happen. Yeah. And, and you, you click out of it and you never go back to it. It's another to distribute it. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, and he was sentenced to 20 years. And of course, because our judicial system works so well, he's out in what, three <laughs> I think oh, that makes sense. Like three to five. He's, he's gotten out. Uh, he's on parole. Uh, and we're actually, there's a meeting I'm going to uh, tomorrow uh, for our community. You know, the formal, Hey, by the way, sex offenders can come back to move in. Um, and uh, there's not a lot anyone can do uh, from what I'm understanding. Like you can't technically harass them because they have rights too. Uh, and, and I do completely say that like that. I don't believe they do have rights after you're, into child porn, you've lost all your rights. Well, <laughs> I don't, yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't there's give no a reason to, yeah. yeah, there's no reason to say I, I'm in love with children yeah. and I want to have sexual relations with children. It's not, yeah. 
acceptable in our society and you need to abide by that. Well, number one, you're not rehabilitatable. That, that just, that you're not. So that's out the window. Uh, you're going to live back in a home with a minor, with a child. Granted, it's yours, but I guess the law says, hey, if somebody's going to fuck somebody, might as well be their own kid. Uh, <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Like they, if you are into that, you shouldn't be allowed any near any children, include especially your own. Those kids are so better off having no one as a father than a sex offender as a father. I'm, I'm going to agree with you because it just, I don't know that they can draw the line of what's appropriate and what's not, especially somebody who is residing in your home, wearing yeah. pajamas, wearing sweats. I, 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 you know, and I don't want to say that I'm, I'm saying the victim, you know, wore something that meant they were asking for it. I think yeah. lines get blurred. If that's in your mind and that's something you are into, that ain't going to change. Nope. That's hardwired in you and that's sick and horrible. And if that's who you are, okay, but you need to remove yourself from society yourself then. Uh, and yeah. I'm not saying go kill yourself. That's not a bad suggestion. But I'm saying uh, there are communities out there that people go to uh, for people like that because they realize they are such a risk uh, to the rest of the world. Uh mm -hmm. And I just think, get the hell out of the, where you've been. I, I, not necessarily to go reoffend by any means, but just you, you shouldn't be here anymore. Um, so, yeah. At that, least out of the mainstream. We don't yeah. need to be interacting with you. Yeah, exactly. So that's, uh, that's something interesting that I've noted. But so going through my mind of like, well, how can you drive this person out of your neighborhood legally? <laughs> so... <laughs> Here's an idea I came up with after I Googled, can you ma mail feces to someone? That's against the law. Uh, technically. <laughs> technically. Um, technically. And anyone, you know, anyway. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the other idea I came up with, and I think this actually might be completely legal. I think we should get a, a bunch of cardboard cutouts of Chris Hansen that are waterproof. And, oh. and just kind of put them around the neighborhood. <laughs> all kind of like. Take a seat. Standing, like, lurking behind trees, just all kind of, like, looking at his house. Oh, God, and you're he, terrible. And I love it. Other people on the in the neighborhood to go along with this, which I think probably a lot would, um, it would be, yeah, it might make him a little uncomfortable and want to leave. Well, you know, what it would do is it would let him know, hey, we're paying attention, we know, and we're uncomfortable. Is that harassment? You might just have a thing for Chris Hansen. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's I, any law about putting uh, Chris Hansen cardboard cutouts in your front yard. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think that's a, an absolutely perfect thing to do. I'm, it's passive aggressive. You're not going directly at the person. You're not even going to the person. You're mm -mm. not communicating with the person. You're putting something in your yard. Uh, I don't see a problem with that. You can have political signs in your yard. What if you just are a really big Chris Hansen fan? You are into podcasting. You're into true crime. I don't see an issue here. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> it's on my list of, uh, I think I might bring it up at the meeting tomorrow night. Oh my hey God, guys. just remind me to never get on your bad side. <laughs> hey guys, here's an idea. Or I could like get him printed now and just bring him to the meeting and like, hey, everybody, have a Chris Hansen. <laughs> Before you leave, be sure to grab a Chris Hansen. Chris, Chris Hansen on a stick. <laughs> The new way to fight child predators. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now. You're consuming the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.